You want to work with wildlife. I was like you once. I wanted to see all the animals in the world. I wanted to touch them all. I wanted to help them all. I wanted to be their best friend and I wanted them to be my best friend. Yes, it is a bit Eliza Thornberry, but if you're watching this video and you want to go into this career path, chances are you've probably wanted to be like her too. Now I've come a decent way along the path towards working with wildlife and I know that it can be a very competitive road, so I wanted to share with you how I've done it. So today I'll be talking about my undergraduate degree in zoology, a little bit about my master's degree in science communication and wildlife filmmaking, some of the jobs that I've had working with wildlife and some of the volunteering experience that's been really helpful in getting me skills and experience working in this field. I'll probably do a full another video on my wildlife filmmaking degree and the jobs that I've had as a result of that because it's just a bit too much to talk about in this one video. Now I'm still kind of at the beginning of my career but I'm hoping that hearing about my path um, towards working with wildlife will be helpful for anyone who's looking at a career in a similar field, whether it be zoology, wildlife biology, conservationist, science communicator, any of those things really. I was just waiting for you to subscribe if you haven't already. No pressure though, I don't force any friendships. I just think that, you know, if you're here, you like nature, I put out a lot of nature content, so feel free. So I knew from a really young age that I wanted to work with wildlife. I remember when I was about seven years old, I told my parents that I wanted to study zoology and somehow I already knew which university I wanted to go to too, and that was Otago because I knew they had a um, zoology course there. I was really fascinated by wildlife. I loved reading about animals, I would read a lot of books about animals, and I would also watch a lot of Animal Planet, and some of my favourite people to watch on there were Jeff Corwin and Steve Irwin. And then when I was probably about 11 or 12 years old, I started volunteering at the SPCA, um, basically just cleaning out animal cages and playing with the cats and the dogs, which was great. Even though I had lots of pets at home, I still really enjoyed doing that. And I think that early exposure to handling animals that I didn't necessarily know that might be a little bit more aggressive or a little bit more scared um, was really good for me to develop my skills working with animals. Fast forward to high school, I know that lots of people will be wondering uh, whether it's important or not you take specific subjects. I definitely think it is. I remember my biology course in year 13 when I was about 17 years old. That's kind of when I first started learning about evolution, which was a part of biology that I found really, really interesting. Um, I also took chemistry, which was probably pretty important. I didn't have to take any chemistry papers at university, but it was good to have that kind of background. Uh, also maths, important to statistics if you can, but definitely not necessary uh, for high school. I know a few people that have gone into biology careers without doing um, statistics in high school, but definitely in university you'll need to do some. So as I mentioned, I went to the University of Otago down in Dunedin here in New Zealand. My undergraduate degree was a Bachelor of Science majoring in Zoology, and then I also did a minor in Anthropology, just because I found it interesting. Studying Zoology at Otago was really great. Uh, they have a really well-established Zoology department there. They have a whole beautiful building. I love that building. Also, Dunedin is the wildlife capital of New Zealand. We studied quite a broad range of different things, so there was a lot of opportunities to figure out what you really liked within the subject of Zoology and what you wanted to focus on for postgraduate, if that's what you wanted to do. So we did things like cell biology, neurobiology which was absolutely fascinating about how brains evolved and social insects and that kind of thing. We did evolution conservation which was really cool because that was a bit more specific to uh, New Zealand examples. Biological statistics so that would be really helpful for population monitoring and endangered species work and that kind of thing. We also did some parasitology looking at parasites which was a field that I had no idea would be so interesting. In terms of practical work, we got to go on a few field trips. One of my favourites that I remember was going out to a yellow-eyed penguin colony and watching them come home from sea. We also did labs, which I was pretty conflicted about at the time, to be quite honest. Um, we did a lot of dissecting of animals. Um, we also did some development biology too, so that was when we would manipulate things with embryos. So I wasn't super keen on that either, but there was always the option to opt out of doing those kinds of practical things. I know that they can be helpful for people that are studying towards becoming a vet or 
wildlife rehabilitator or but it wasn't really for me and I found that out pretty early on. We also got the chance to design and implement our own scientific experiment. I remember we did ours about the feeding behavior of birds and how they respond to predators. If you're going into this kind of field and you want to do research as your job then that's really good skills to have and particularly if you're going to be going into postgraduate study as well. For my postgraduate degree I did a Masters of Science, specifically Master of Science Communication endorsed in natural history filmmaking. During my undergraduate degree I realised that I didn't want to become an expert on one single thing within zoology. I wanted to learn about as many different species as I could and hopefully go out and see them one day. So then I came across this science communication course. It aligned a bit more closely with my values in terms of what I wanted to do to help animals and help spread awareness of them um, and what was happening to them in the world. It was a two-year course. In the first year we did classes where we got to learn how to use the cameras and all of these other different skills and then in the second year we did our thesis and that was 40% written thesis um, and 60% creative work which was where we made a film. I remember feeling quite conflicted about whether or not I wanted to be a scientist or if I wanted to be the person filming the scientist. So this course really helped me to clarify what I was passionate about. So I had a great group of people that I worked with and I made some really good connections with them and I'm still friends with a lot of them and some of them have even given me work which is fantastic. Okay now we're going to talk about volunteering. Volunteering outside of having an actual job in this field is the best way to get practical skills and knowledge that you can use um, in this career field. And before you can even get a job, you kind of need those skills and that knowledge and experience. So the way that you can do that is through volunteering. I don't always expect these to be paid. Sometimes they'll even cost you. But in the best circumstances, uh, whoever is giving you the volunteer job will pay for your transport over somewhere or your accommodation. I'm not talking about those volunteering safari things where you pay like $7,000 to go and help cheetahs in Africa. I don't know about you but I can't afford that kind of thing. The other great thing about volunteering is there's so many opportunities to have really cool experiences. So if working with wildlife is your goal, um, this can often give you a chance to work really close with them, especially if you're teamed up with a scientist or someone conducting research. During my undergraduate degree I made sure to get involved in volunteering and I had some really great experiences. When I was looking for these I knew that I wanted to get really specific skills for working in conservation here in New Zealand. So that's things to do with birds and to do with uh, introduced mammal control. So definitely the standout was volunteering at Orokanui Eco Sanctuary down in Dunedin feeding Haas Tokoweka kiwi chicks which are one of the rarest kiwi species here in New Zealand. Some of the volunteering roles I've had uh, up here in Wellington have been at Zealandia, another eco sanctuary. There I have done bird feeding, nest box monitoring with kakariki, little green parakeets and hee hee nest box monitoring as well so those are quite endangered species. I've also done frog monitoring too which was helping a PhD research student to catch and uh, measure and weigh our native frogs which I never would have done if I hadn't done volunteering because these frogs are super rare. Outside of Zealandia other places I've volunteered for have been the Rimutaka Forest Park Trust where I do kiwi tracking with one of my friends. Also through them I've had some lizard handling experience. I got to go to a couple of lizard handling workshops so now I know how to catch and measure and weigh skinks and geckos. And when I first moved up to Wellington I went over and volunteered on Kapiti Island for about a month when I had quite a bit of spare time and this was kind of my first introduction into learning how to feed a really endangered bird, the hee hee, um, doing bird surveys, knowing how to read the bands on their legs so that we could tell individuals apart from one another, also doing predator trap lines, so checking traps and re resetting them and that kind of thing. I also gained tons of knowledge about the different birds that live here in New Zealand, what their calls sound like, how to identify them, and so great to spend so much time with actual Department of Conservation rangers, see what their life was like day to day, what kind of work they did and whether or not I'd be interested in doing that full time. Now onto my work. What have these qualifications actually gotten me in terms of real life paid work? So I got my first job working with wildlife while I was still studying my undergraduate degree at Otago. 
I worked at the Royal Albatross Centre. So that was a tour guide position. I would take groups of people up to the nesting colony of albatross and we would watch them and I would talk about the albatross and their behaviours and their ecology and that kind of thing. We would also do little blue penguin tours as well, so we would take people down to the beach and watch the little blue penguins come up out of the water, which was super fun. I also got to work with tourists, and tourists can be quite hard work, especially if they're not particularly respectful of the nature, but it is a very good skill to have to work with tourists. Obviously, these days with COVID, it is a lot trickier, but hopefully once the world gets back on track, that kind of job will become a bit more available. It is a great way of communicating about wildlife and helping people to connect with nature. After working two summer seasons at the Royal Albatross Centre, I started working at Natural History New Zealand, NHNZ, which is a production company based in Dunedin that makes factual content, usually about wildlife. So for that job, I had a contract working on a TV show about the Dunedin Wildlife Hospitals. It was amazing to work for somewhere like NHNZ because I knew from quite a young age that I wanted to be like David Attenborough. <laughs> so it was great to be able to feel like I was doing a little bit of that and I met some really awesome people. I can go into more details around this job that I had because there's a lot to talk about there as well if I make another video about my wildlife filmmaking career. In my current job, I work at an eco sanctuary. I take night tours from time to time, I go out and show people kiwi, and then I also do some of the education work there too with school groups that come through. I also really love this job because I get paid to do research about specific animals and expand my knowledge. That's what I love doing, I love learning about animals, so it's great to be able to be paid to do that. Some tips to finish off with. If you decide to study, which I definitely recommend you do, especially if you live here in New Zealand, you will need a degree at least, potentially even a master's degree to get a kind of job in this field. Make sure you pay attention to which papers you're drawn to, which ones you really enjoy, and that'll help to narrow down what kind of career path you want to take. Then once you know that, you can focus your volunteering on getting the kind of skills you would need to get a job in that field. Grades matter during your undergraduate degree, particularly if you want to go into postgraduate study, so make sure you work hard. It is a competitive field, I'm not going to lie to you. Your dream job might not be attainable for quite a long time. So you, if you're passionate and you're really dedicated to getting into this kind of work, just keep on trying and know that the skills that you'll be getting in the meantime, whatever kind of work experience you can find, whatever kind of volunteering experience you can find, those skills and that knowledge and experience will be helpful when you end up getting your dream job. I have relied on my people skills, my computer skills, my communication skills so many times for getting work. Connections really help with getting a job in this field when it comes to hearing about different opportunities for jobs or different opportunities to upskill or volunteering opportunities. So make sure if you're going into a degree, make friends with the people around you. Who knows, you might be employing them one day or they might be employing you. And good luck! Good luck to you. I know it's competitive, but this work is so worthwhile. It is super fulfilling for me. And even though I'm only part of the way there, I still feel so satisfied with the amazing experiences I've been able to have with wildlife and super grateful for them. I'm hoping we're going towards a world where these kinds of skills will be valued a lot more when it comes to looking after our nature and we need more eco warriors like you. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more nature content from me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey, well done on reaching the end screen. Can I interest you in some more? We got giant snails, we got seals. What can I get you? Yes, excellent choice.